Yo, what's happening? This is Eric from Foot Shop, and you're tuning into our interview with the dope DOD. What's up, guys? What's good? So, uh, I'm gonna kick it off with uh, how do you like the city so far? You're here for the third time, maybe? Yeah, I think I think this is like shit. I'm not sure. Is it the third time or is it? I think this is the fourth time, probably. I'm not sure, but. I might be mixing up some shit because like a lot of times when we play in the Czech Republic, we fly in from Prague. But uh, yeah, I got to say, I love the city. I love the people. Always when we come to the Czech Republic, we got one of the craziest crowds like in the whole fucking like dope DOD world, you know? <laughs> um, shit, I, you know, like I love that motherfuckers always got some weed here. <laughs> and good shit. Like, first of all, I was looking at that shit. I was like, mm, this look like some outside grown shit and then I smelled that shit I was like god damn that's some real ass haze shit at the second stash brother that's it. we got more okay so uh I'm gonna jump into fashion and shoes if you guys cool with that okay so uh what are your favorite sneakers what is your favorite brand of sneakers pop it off all right. Well, I got my favorite brand on me right now. That's the Ewings right here. Yeah, I fucks with Ewings because they just feel right, and I love the looks. And uh, I'm a I'm a big fan of Patrick Ewing. It's like a yeah, it's like a real motherfucking proper old school representative of the real basketball era. Um, yeah, I gotta say I fucks with Jordans too. Probably my second favorite shoes. And I fucks with the Nikes now and then, but I gotta say, like, the Nikes played out, man. I'm fucking with the Ewings all day, every day. Pa, pa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, first of all, I'm not really a specific sneakerhead. Like, I just like, you know, if I like the shoes, I'm a cop them. That's up front. Like, you know, I'm, I'm very average with the Nike Air Forces when it comes to sneakers and that shit. Um, special shoes that I really like taste-wise would either be Wallabies, Clark Wallabies, or Timberland Boots. Those are my old-time favorites, so um, basically that. But I'll fuck with any type of sneaker as long as it looks fly. Yeah, so it looks, you guys really like the old-school stuff, if I'm not mistaken. I don't like, there's a lot of, you know, uh, if, if I walk into a modern sneaker store, I see a lot of, you know, like neon green meets orange. I like to stick to a color when it comes to sneakers. So I guess that's, you could say, old school to begin with, yeah. Well, uh, do you guys remember what were your first sneakers that you, like, bought? Like, Damn, my first sneakers that I bought. I think it was a pair of uh, uh, Nikes, actually, Air Force One. I think <laughs> I'm not sure though, but uh, I think it might have been a pair of Reeboks actually. Now that I'm uh, thinking back, yeah, and I still fuck with Re Reebok like a couple of years ago. And I think actually the Ewings is actually like a side branch of uh, of the Reeboks. So yeah, I'm still fucking with the Reeboks, baby. You, yeah. the actual first pair of shoes I bought. Like you said, there's a couple of old school brands that spring to mind, like Fila and that shit. I used to have a, a pair of Filas, and the first thing that popped in mind of an actual memory of me owning my own pair of shoes must have been a pair of football shoes. <laughs> Adidas, baby. With the prints in them, yep. Yeah, Fila is really uh, having like a second comeback because uh, Gosha and all these brands are bringing it up, so we're really looking forward to this. Yeah, yeah. And uh, since you're a collector, um, do you have like a pair of like the most expensive ones, like the most you have spent on sneakers like so far? Well, I think it's about, well, not too much. Uh, I think the most expensive pair of sneakers I got right now are my orange Ewings, which are, which have a market value of like $240, um, dollars, but I got them for like 120 so. Yeah. <laughs> Gee, man, I usually get all my shit for free, baby. Um, I think that, again, it takes me back to, to my story about the Wallabies back in high school when that shit first got hot, especially through listening to Wu-Tang and that shit. 
I, I went and cop my own pair of wallabies, which at the time was like close to 300 guilders at the time, which, you know, before the Euro got introduced. So that, that was major. That would have been, I think they pretty much switched it to Euros. So you might still, you know, get them around the same price as they used to be before the Euro was there. But in my recollection, I never, I never spend that much on sneakers. As long as they fly, I don't go out and be like, I mean, if I'd find them and I'd say this, I need to get this, there's no way around it, I might, but no, that, that'd be it. Uh, okay, so uh, let's move on to music now. So um, from what I heard, you guys met before you introduced Dopey to, to the group. Is that true? So you two guys, how long do you know uh, each other for? Yeah. No, I used to, uh, we, we came together as a group. It was really close, you know, like as far as meeting each other, but it actually started with me and Dopey rapping together first. Used to be another member in his group. Um, that was a group before, you know, our group got together. And then, um, yeah, me and Jay started doing some, some duo rapping shit, which initially was the start of the DOD. And then Dopey was always rapping with us. So, you know, that kind of became the dope to the DOD but it was first me and Dopey in about maybe a little under two years is when Jay joined us but it's been you know pretty much from the start we were like me and Jay were like 15 16 Dopey would have been 18 shouts out to the old geezer I see you baby oh. excuse my lack of knowledge in that case uh, so um, when was like the breakthrough of like dope DOD as a group like when when can you like date this it was um back in 2011 uh when we dropped what happened shit just blew the fuck up and people just it just went viral like in a matter of days and people just went crazy fred durst gave us a call he was like yeah i gotta come on tour with me for europe after that we got hit up by corn they wanted us to join them on tour and shit just fucking spun, spun out of control, you know? And um, I think we, we actually, like, started making the shit back in 2009. Or was it 2008? Yeah, it was 2009. We, we actually already had what happened. And we was working on the video in the upcoming years. And um, But when we dropped it in 2011, that's when shit really blew the fuck up. And uh, did you do hardcore rap straight from the beginning or you came from a different genre? Or it was uh, a mix of things that actually grew up to this or? I mean, in, in, in the essence, it's, it's always been hardcore rap. It, it just, I think the older you get and the more skill you get, the, the more you, you know, try to take it somewhere else. But as far as the essence of what we stood for and what we've done, it's always been some hardcore rap shit, absolutely. Can you say what inspired this? What inspired your style that you have? Um, you know, I mean, first of all, getting into hip hop, I think coming from an urban environment, you know, we're from the city, like any other city, you know, there's a rap scene usually. And as for our city, there's a, a pretty big one considering the Dutch standard. So, you know, we came up with not only rap, we had Noisia uh, coming from our hometown. Um, a lot of pioneers, you know, for people that are, are around the area that know, you know, there's a there's a scene in our city. So that, first of all, you know, just hanging on the streets, smoking, getting into trouble with your friends, you know, just just some some what an urban kid would do, you know. And then, yeah, listening to rap, it, you know, I, it didn't I didn't choose to rap. It chose me, as I say, it's cliche, but it's a fact, you know, you, you, you fuck around with it and you find out, you know, you're good with it and the shit we used to listen to you know used to be shit like Def Squad, Wu-Tang Clan, Onyx, uh, old Eminem uh, but you name it it can vary all the way to Tribe Called Quest and whatever the fuck held to Skelter indeed predominantly though whatever it is to us it had to be something that you know lyrically packs character and wit you know to me too i spit some hardcore shit but i try to be funny too you know i, I want you to have fun when you listen to that shit and for me that's the same when i listen to some of my favorite artists you know they they take you into into their realm you know and that's that's what we try to do with our music okay and uh what is 
what would you call like uh, your favorite track that you have ever produced? Like, what is like uh, the masterpiece that you're really proud of that you put the most energy in that you know the clip is good too? Damn, um, shit, <clears throat> that is an interesting question. Um, well, you know, like I'm gonna be, you know, kind of straightforward and say uh, what happened when it comes to like, you know, like the way the video just worked and the track just fucking you know introduced us to you know the world and shit yeah but you know like i think like you know every album we make we get better so i naturally think like you know like any track that's off the next album uh the roach is better than any track including what happened on branded but you know i mean i mean everybody got their taste you know everybody got their favorite and shit but you know i gotta say to me personally like the newest shit always feels like the best shit but what happened is it's that shit that's that shit yeah word um i can elaborate first of all like reap said uh, um I, I think as an artist you always try to outdo the the last thing you made so as far as there's a couple tracks coming on the new album we did with onyx called shotguns in hell and there's some of the tracks on there I feel is, is our best work yet. Um, so that's yet for the crowd to find out, you know. As um, far as my favorite off the top, what I recently had, because I, I don't check my old shit, you know. So only when I meet somebody new, you know, it's like, oh, you got to check my shit out here. I'll play you. And then um, so recently I played uh, Rocket for somebody. And I was like, that to me is like, the epitome of a dope DOD song, you know, the beat, the hook, the lyrics, and I think it's timeless. For example, with Jay, I can understand why Jay says what happened, because it's also, it's one of those bangers too, except I feel Rocket outclasses it slightly in terms of production lyrics, but that's for me personally, I guess, yeah. Talking about Onyx, how did you guys meet, actually? Well, that's a funny story can tell it better because you were there first yeah i mean we, we told this off it's it started at a festival in france and um we were playing at the same uh stage as them and they went after us and we stuck around to see the show we ran into the mosh pit all that good shit you know i don't give a shit if i perform at the festival if onyx is rocking i'm right there in the crowd and then um, after the show, I was smoking out with Fredro Starr and um, the infamous, <laughs> the, the classic opening line was, I was like, yo, my G, you need to check our shit out. We want to work with y'all. And then he's like, so what's your name? I'm like, Dope D.O.D., homie. He's like, Dope D.O.D. Ain't y'all the niggas that sound like us? <laughs> so he kind of knew, you know, what we were up to. And that was classic. I gave him some of my weed, he gave me some of his. We exchanged numbers and, and contacts and um, met up numerous times in Amsterdam and LA and um, the rest is history, man. So I guess really weed connects people, doesn't it? <laughs> and uh, we also know that you, uh, you did a few things with the Black Sun Empire uh how did you guys link up like what was the fire started for this shit i don't actually remember <laughs> i don't remember well i remember the first track we did but i don't remember exactly how we linked up i think they i think they heard of us right i think they because they because they've been you know they've been in the game for a while and they've been fucking crushing shit for a long time and you know, like kind of when it comes to our sound, I think they are kind of like one of the pioneers in Holland that been doing some shit like that, you know, for a while, like internationally. But um, I think they actually hit us up, right? Well, no, I'm not, I think we hit them up because um, we we obviously knew about them and kind of like noisy and shit, you know, in, in that genre, they're legends from Holland and, and, and worldwide. And I think because our first collab was on the Ugly EP and that record had six different producers on six different tracks. So we were just looking for, you know, the strongest assembly of producers to put together. And um, Black Sun, 
was was when we had in mind. I think at the time it was your brother who said like, yo, we might have to fuck with the Blacks on Empire Beach, you know? He was like, they drop us some hot shit recently, no, no, no. And uh, that's how we did Boiling Point, and now we're on their latest album as well. And are you planning on working with them in the future, or or is it finished, the the collaboration? What do you mean with Blacks on Empire? I mean, it definitely, it ain't never finished. I mean, you start building a musical relationship, so, you know, you gotta dance from time to time. But we just released that record, uh, like my man said, um, on their latest album. Um, so go check that shit out, Black Sun Empire, big up. And uh, I think we're gonna be, you know, doing some more shit in the future, probably. They might do a production on uh, one of our albums or, you know, projects. I don't know, I mean, time will tell. Talking about collaborations, uh, do you have anything planned in the nearest future that we can look forward to? Well, yeah, like I said, there's a there's an entire album coming with Onyx, Shotguns in Hell. It's gonna have sick features, sick producers, sick verses, sick videos. I mean, it's DoD Onyx. You know what we do? Just expect it to be 20 times as sick as what we already done. So you know, be on the lookout for that, man. It's. Uh, It's gonna be the hardest album of the year, I promise. Coming back to your style, uh, are you thinking of probably trying something a little bit new, a little bit new, like blending into a little new genres in, in the future, or you just want to stick to what you do? I mean, I think the key is to always remain original, and that way you're gonna always do something new. So whether the music scene is doing something new that you wanna be a part of or want to sound like i think you know making sure you stay fresh no matter what you make is the key to always being new so that's my answer dope and uh are you planning on staying a duo at this at this time or uh you were thinking of maybe <laughs> Not that you would like split ways or are you planning on maybe taking a third third member to the group or just staying the way you are right now? Yeah, we want to do like a... Yeah, we want to do like a casting show, like American Idols and, you know, see... Yeah, yeah, just sit here, you know. Exactly, he's gonna be Simon Cowell. Simon Cowell. Nah, but, um... I mean, um, well, we're planning on, you know, like, um, cause Dopey not being in Dope DoD right now, it's not because we don't want him in there anymore. It's because, you know, it just didn't work out right now at this moment in time. He needs to, you know, take his time to take care of his shit and everything. But I feel like, you know, once he's ready again, like Dope DoD is gonna be, you know, probably complete again and do a fucking, you know, new album. Was the extra extra sneak peek? No, what I what I meant because he asked, um, you know, are we are we planning on splitting up or doing something different? What we what we're thinking of doing in the near future is doing like a a double solo album, but basically two solo albums. We're gonna release it as one package, but you'll have a a skits disc and a J disc. So for all the fans asking if we're ever gonna do solos, that that that's what he wanted to say. You know, hell yeah. <laughs> no, but you know, so I, I think that's something dope uh, for both of us creatively. You know, we get a breather. We get to kind of dab around in our separate chambers and um, still give you a dope DoD record in the process. Enough about the music. Uh, you have anything else you would like to add before we move on? I want to go smoke some motherfucking weed. Okay, cool. Uh, so, to the show. So, you guys are playing tomorrow at the Lucerna Music Bar. So, uh, you're looking forward to it? Yeah, fuck yeah. I gotta say, like, Lucerna Music Bar is one of my favorite venues. It's a kind of weird stage because they got, like, this half-moon stage going on. So, you kind of, like... You know, it doesn't feel like normally a stage just has like a front view. But this time, like in the Lucerna Music Bar, it's like, yeah, it's like a fucking arena. Like, you know, you gotta like, there's people everywhere. You gotta prove yourself, you know? But I just love the fucking energy we always get there. 
the people just go motherfucking crazy. They throw motherfucking bags of weed to my head, which I don't mind. Can, oh, keep throwing them. You see the black guy? That's where you throw the weed at. <laughs> nah, but I always love the country, the energy, um, and just the uh, the festivity. You know, like it's always a motherfucking party here. Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, but it is though, and you know, like I feel like a lot of countries, especially more in the West, they can, you know, like pick up a lot of shit from the Czech Republic, and just when you go to a motherfucking party, you want to go all out, not some motherfucker. You don't want to be filming with your phone and looking at a motherfucker all day, making him feel all weird and awkward. Just go fucking crazy like the Czech people do. I love y'all motherfuckers. Kind of answer my second question right now, but uh, is it true the <laughs> the more east you go, the harder the parties are? Well, I mean, not necessarily, right? I mean, it depends on you know a lot of things, but <laughs> like a J stack, like a J stack. <laughs> Fuck out of here with that bullshit. Nah, but um. I feel like, you know, it differs. Like, sometimes you can, you know, do a show in the Czech Republic and people go all crazy. And maybe after that, you do a show even more, like, even more to the eastern part and people go less crazy. So, to me, it's not really, like, you know, this cliche thing. Like, the more you go east, the crazier they get. Because eventually you'll be back at the same point you started. Well, <laughs> But I feel like, you know, like, it's kind of like a back and forth energy, you know? It's like kind of like what you make of it. I feel like you got to give everything as an artist and then the people will give back their best. So, you know, like it can differ. Even in the same city, it could be a different show, you know? No, I agree. I agree with Reap as far as, you know, a lot of people ask you where do they go the hardest or is our country the greatest? You, you know, you can't say that because indeed a, a sick crowd is a sick crowd. What I can add to, I think what you're trying to say is I think the more east you go, um, the easier and the more humble the attitude of the people is without having to prove anything to them. You know what I mean? I think certain people that are more west are like, you know, what's the latest rumor? Uh, you know, your shirt looked ugly. You know, they're more concerned about that type of shit than actually just being there for the artist, you know, and, and showing love without having to have any extras. And I think... That's something people that are more West can learn from here. People are humble. They don't have a lot, but they give it their all, you know, and that's the way to go, man. Uh, could you actually um, compare the audience? You were playing in the States before, correct? Yeah. Could you compare, like, uh, the American and the European audience? Mm, I got to say the comparison is hard to make because America is so big and there's so many different audiences in America. I gotta say, for example, if you take like a regular audience, like for example, somebody that is maybe like a, a you know a fan of Future, for example, I think those people might be filming a lot more. Or for example, if you go to a Drake show, it's gonna be a whole lot of bitches there, so you know they ain't gonna be in the mosh pit going all crazy. But if, I feel like if you go to a like a ICP show, like the Gathering of the Juggalos, if y'all don't know about that shit, check it out. <laughs> now that's a motherfucking crazy ass crowd right there. So I feel like you can't really compare like American and European, but in general, like if you take the regular audience, like, you know, like a Drake audience, I definitely feel like the European audience is kind of like more hooliganish than the American audience. But still though, like in America, they got some crazy ass fucking crowds as well. Like, like I said, the gathering of the juggalos, people just fucking mosh and go crazy and stomp each other's heads and drop kick each other. What the fuck? <laughs> Whoop, 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 whoop. Okay, I got one last thing on you guys. Uh, could you send a message to the local ladies and women that are going to be attending the show tomorrow? I'm married. <laughs> Baby, forget about your boyfriend. Leave him at home. Bring five extra girlfriends. Dress your best. And make sure you shower before you fuck your man after you come from the club. Okay, thank you guys for the interview. You've been dope. Peace.
Hey, yo, this is Dope DoD live from Czech Republic. I'm Skits Vicious. And I'm Jay Reaper. Yes, sir. Be sure to look out for the upcoming album with Onyx, Shotguns in Hell, dropping May 29th. Next upcoming single plus video, Pyro, dropping April 29th. We everywhere. We coming to a city near you. Shout out to everybody supporting us worldwide. DoD Army, motherfuckers. Blah!